Hey guys, this is Richard at Reefs.com. Thank you for joining me for this video. This video is brought to you by GeosReef.com. For this video, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step installation guide or manual of sort on your brand new SSE calcium reactor. Let's go. This is an instructional video on how to configure and run the Geo Super Silent Extreme Calcium Reactor. Remember to always keep the smart card attached to your reactor so that you can reference troubleshooting videos, instructions, replacement parts, and up-to-date information at any time. We recommend Two Little Fishies Reborn or similar media for best results. We have years of experience with this media and overall provides the best anticipated results. Large media is always used in a primary reactor chamber. If using a secondary chamber like the SMC415, use small size media like Little Reborn or aragonite. Smaller media provides larger surface area for residual CO2 to be used up which is needed to help increase the outgoing water pH and provides even more alkalinity and calcium to your aquarium. Set aside the remag and rinse each bag of reactor media separately in a strainer to remove debris. Keeping the media sizes separate, soak the large and small media overnight to allow the pores of the media to expel air and to allow water to saturate them. An occasional shake of the containers will speed up the process. This helps keep the majority of the air out of the reactor at the setup time. First, make sure to cover the 90 degree fitting on the inside of the reactors so not to allow media to enter. Pour in the large reactor media without any water right up to an inch from the 90 degree fitting. Now add a thin layer of remag on top. If you are using secondary chamber, make sure to leave one to two inches of space from the rim of the reactor. Before hooking up your reactor to CO2 tank and the reactor, make sure to read the manufacturer's instructions on the regulator of your choice. This is very important to protect your investment in your regulator and reactor. If your regulator comes with a tubing and or a check valve, we highly recommend you use those in this installation. First, attach 12 inches of tubing to the output of your regulator. Attach your check valve paying close attention to the arrow on it. Make sure that the arrow is pointing towards the calcium reactor. Add the appropriate length of tubing at the output side of the check valve to the CO2 input fitting on the saturation chamber lid. There are two methods to provide water to your reactor from your sump in order to control the effluent water. Both ways have their pros and cons, so make sure to study them for the best method for your setup. Never connect your reactor via manifold from your sump. Manifolds have inconsistent pressure that would disrupt the reactor effluent. Method 1 is to use a submersible pump to push water from your sump to the reactor within 6 feet. We recommend the CJ Synchra 0.5 with an adapter fitting and no more than 6 feet of tubing. Place the Synchra 0.5 in the area of your sump with clean water that is void of microbubbles. Normally, this would be a return chamber. Now, take the attached tubing and connect it to the infitting of the lid of the reactor. Make sure to trim down the length of tubing to only as much length that is needed. In order to control the effluent water going back to your sump, we will use precision needle valve along with the inline filter. The inline filter will catch debris passing through the reactor. Without this filter, the valve will clog in a few days. We recommend cleaning the inline filter every month by removing it and then back flushing water through it. You will want to place the needle valve in a location that you can easily get to so you can make adjustments as needed. We advise returning the effluent water to the one of the following. 1. Refugium 2. Algae reactor 3. Skimmer chamber Method 2 is to use a continuous duty paralytic pump like an Ecotech Versa or the Comor FX STP2. We believe this to be the most efficient and precise method. First, you need to recognize that with a paralytic pump, you can either push water into the reactor or pull water from the reactor. With this reactor, you will want to pull water from it, so this is how you want to do that. Run tubing from the main chamber of the reactor labeled in to the return chamber of the sump. Make sure to secure this end underwater and that the water you will be pulling into the reactor is clean and void of microbubbles. Now run tubing from the H2O out on the CO2 saturation chamber to input draw side of the Versa. This will be left side of fitting. 
Now that you have connected all the tubing and filled the reactors up with the media, it's time to get it running. The key to having the reactor run stable is an accurate pH probe reading. Before installing the pH probe into the reactor, make sure to follow its manufacturer's calibration procedure. We recommend that you calibrate the pH probe every 6 months. After you have calibrated the pH probe, insert into the pH probe fitting on the lid of the reactor. Make sure to only go down so far that there is 1 to 2 inch from the reactor media. Tighten the fitting only by hand and never use tools to do this. Now that all tubing connection and pH probe are secure and the media is in the reactor, it is time to fill up the reactor with your aquarium water. Remove the lid from the reactor main chamber. Use a clean pitcher of aquarium water and slowly fill. You will see that water will also fill into CO2 saturation chamber simultaneously. Once the water reaches the main chamber's rim, replace the lid making sure the GEO logo is in front and center to verify that 90 degree fitting is pointed upwards towards the lid. Hand tighten the thumb bolts and never use tools to do this. If you have a secondary chamber, connect it that will auto fill once the reactor is running. At this point, you are ready to plug in your feed pump for whichever method you are using. For 10 to 30 minutes, run the CJ pump with the needle valve fully open, or if you're using a paralytic pump, run at 100 ml per minute continuously. If you're having trouble getting the paralytic pump to pull water through, you have an air leak somewhere, most likely at the pH pro fitting. Double check and hand tighten. Once you observe the majority of the air inside has been perched out, you can now plug in the recirculation pump and run for additional 10 to 30 minutes to get remaining air out. You will now see the water moving throughout the reactor with the water cascading in from the main chamber into the saturation chamber. You will see the bubbles and water mixing in the top of the CO2 saturation chamber which is normal. Now that your reactor is completely set up, you can start your initial dosing to your aquarium. When starting a calcium reactor for the first time, it is important that the aquarium parameters are already set where you want them. A calcium reactor is designed to maintain the alkalinity and calcium levels and not to significantly bring them up or down from extremes. Make sure to record your initial alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium readings so that you can refer to them later. We recommend starting at the following settings. CO2 regulator settings to 10 PSI with one bubble released every 3 seconds. pH controller set to 6.6 .6 plus minus 0.05. Effluent rate set to 30 ml per minute. For specific details on different brands of medias, please refer to the smart card attached to your reactor on the manual on the website. In the beginning, it is best to only focus on alkalinity reading and make the reactor adjustments with the affluent rate. Every 12 hours, test the alkalinity of both the reactor's effluent and the reef display water and record those numbers. The alkalinity of the effluent will always be greater than that of the display. By comparing the alkalinity of the current and the previous test, you can determine if any further adjustments are required. If the aquarium alkalinity has dropped, the reactor is not putting enough back to keep up, so you will increase the effluent rate. If it has raised, the reactor is adding too much and the reactor will need to be dialed down by decreasing the effluent rate. The simplest way to meet your target number is to increase or decrease the effluent rate. Remember this, nothing good happens quick in a reef aquarium, so we advise to only make up or down adjustments in increments of 5 ml per minute. If after three adjustment cycles when increasing the effluent rate, you will now need to adjust the CO2 bubble release from one every three seconds to one every second. For specific details on fine tune adjustments, please refer to smart card attached to the reactor or the manual on our website. Thank you for your support.